Hello, I'm Rod Elmore, and today we're going to cover solving simultaneous linear equations using an augmented matrix. But let's kind of refresh our mind on how we solve uh, simultaneous linear equations. Now, the ones I happen to have right here is 2x plus y equals 7 and x minus 2y equals 1. Now, simultaneous means we want to solve these at the same time. These are linear. That means that their graph is a straight line. So they have only one common solution. And before I get started with an augmented matrix, since uh, you may not have done that before, we have solved these before in this class, and we solved them graphically, and we solved them algebraically. So let's kind of review that algebraic solution. Now what we did when we did this algebraically, we did it, we tried to get rid of one of the variables. For example, if we were to um, multiply this top equation by 2, we could do that. So if we multiplied both sides of this by 2, we'd get 4x plus 2y equals 7. And we know if these were equal and we multiplied both sides by uh, non-zero number, the results are going to be equal and we won't have lost anything. So that statement is equivalent to this one. Now if we just rewrite this over here, then we add this side to this side and this one to this one. That keeps everything equal, so we didn't change anything. And 4x plus x is 5x. And 7 plus 1 is 8. Uh-oh, I didn't made a mistake here, didn't I? I didn't multiply this by 2, so let's correct that. Go back up here. Most things happen. 2 times uh, 1 is, 2 times 7 is 14. So now we'll add them up. And the reason I knew I made a mistake is I make this, just like on the test, everything come out to be a nice number. So now we have another equation, but this one only has one unknown in it, so we can solve it since it has only one unknown. So we divide both sides by 5, and so we have x equals 3. Now that's our x value at their common solution point. Now you can go back into either any of these four equations and plug in x equals 3 and find the y. Let's do it to this top one up here. If x is... Oh, we could do it to this original one right here. If x is 3, then 2 times 3 plus y has to equal the 7. Now then, uh, it would be 6 plus y equals 7. Subtract 6, y equals 1. Now this is what we've already done before, so that should look real familiar. Shouldn't be any problem with that. So now what we did was we multiplied both sides by a number. We can do that. We added two equations together, and the results still are going to give us equality. So kind of remember those properties. Because augmented matrices are absolutely nothing new, just the form looks different. So now we're going to go back and solve these using an augmented matrix. Just remember what we did and what we've done before. Now we're going to do the same problem using an augmented matrix. Whoops, I erased my other equation, x minus 2y equals 1. Okay, so now let's see, we're going to use an augmented matrix. So what we're going to do is we're going to switch this over, and if we remember, an aug a matrix is just a rectangular array of numbers. So we're going to take this, and we're just going to simplify it. That's all this is doing. Rather than write all these numbers down in this equality, we're going to put this into a rectangular array of numbers. Take the 2 here, take the 1, and then we're going to put a little dotted line down here. That's not necessary, but it's kind of where the equal is. And then we're going to put a 7 over here. Now we're going to take this one. We've got a 1, negative 2, and 1. Now this is a rectangular array of numbers. As a matrix, it has two rows and three columns. So that is a matrix. It's augmented because it's got this little additional thing that these numbers are a little different than the other one. But now just think about what this came from. It's really this. 
So now there's three rules that the book would like you to remember. I don't think you should remember any of those rules because they're just common sense. So let's just use common sense. Could I flip these rows around and would that change my matrix? Could I put this row on top and this row on the bottom? And we could see over here that we could switch these two and it wouldn't change our equation, would it? So rule number one is you can switch rows whenever you want. Rule number two is, remember we multiplied both sides of this by two to make this four, two, and 14. So we can multiply any row we want by any number. If you do zero, it'll eliminate the equation, so a non-zero number. So rule number one, you can flip the rows Rule number two is you can multiply any row by any number. And rule number three is you can add one row onto the other row. And that's what we already did. When I solved this, we used those three rules. So if you look in the book, they'll give you three rules. You can either memorize them or just use common sense. I say let's just use common sense. Now we're going to use this to solve this just like we did before. Now let me put down what our goal is. Our goal is this. If we had an augmented matrix that looked like this, that's an augmented matrix. It has two rows, three columns. But if you think about this and you translate this back over here into this form, what would it translate back into? Well, this would be my x's, so it would be 1x plus zero y's equals a, and this one would be zero x's plus one y equals b, and since zero times anything eliminates that, this eliminates that, what do we really have? We have our answer, don't we? x equals a and y equals b. So if we can get this into this form, this is called the row reduced form, then we'll know exactly what our answers are. So that's our goal. Our goal is to take this and change it into that using those three properties. So let's see if we can do that. Kind of remember this, this row reduce method. Let's kind of look at this part right here. We want a one, a zero, and a zero, and a one. And what do we have where our one is right now? A two. So we somehow have to change that two into a one. So let's see how we might be able to do that. I'm going to erase this, but can I remember that? We want this a 1, 0, 0, 1. Well, if I look at that, how can I change that 2 into a 1? Well, I could subtract 1 from it. I could divide it by 2. And uh, so that's a way to change that into a 1. Now, if I divided this by 2, I'd have to divide that by 2 and that by 2. And then you got fractions, and some of you might not like fractions that well. So, that's not a real good way. You could subtract this one from this one, and then 1 subtract 2 would be 1. But there's another thing, it's the first property. What if I just flip these rows around? If I flip these rows around, the 1 would automatically be up here. And that's going to be our goal. We're going to get a 1 there first. Then we're going to use that 1 to make that a 0. Then we're going to get a 1 here and a, and a 0 there. And you should go counterclockwise starting at this upper left-hand corner. That's the safest way. There's clever ways to do it. And if you want to be clever and you can pull it off, uh, you'll get full credit. But right now, all I'm going to do is I'm going to flip. I think what I'll, I'll do is flip this back over here. I'm going to flip row one and row two around. And to indicate that, I'm just going to say row one, row two. That indicates what I've done so the person can see I wasn't just doing crazy stuff. So now I'm going to put the top row up here, negative 2, 1, and oops, yep. Then the bottom row I'm going to put in uh, 2, 1, and 7. So now I have my 1 up here, so I accomplished that. Now remember, if I got that to be a 1, I want that to be a 0. So how can I make 2 a 0? Well, besides multiplying by 0, I'm going to have to subtract uh, 2 from it. Where am I going to get a 2 from? Right from this row. So this is what I'm going to do next. I'm going to take row 1, multiply it 
by a negative 2, so we can just add, and we're going to add it on to row 1. Going to add it on to row 2. So that's what we're going to do. Take row 1, multiply it by a negative 2, and add it to row 2. Let's see what happens. So this is kind of the hard part. We're going to end up with a matrix over here. So let's see if we can do this. Row 1. Now I'd like to maybe hold my finger here, and so I'm going to multiply row 1 by a negative 2 and add it on to row 2. I find this to be the best way. Multiply this by a negative 2, and some people like to put that negative 2 out there. Multiply this by a negative 2 and add it on, and then save the adding to later. It's too easy to make mistakes. Multiply this by a negative 2 and add it on to this. Multiply this by a negative 2 and add it on to this. Now let's see what we got. We like row 1 because that is a 1, so I'm just going to recopy that over. Unchanged. Let's see what we get here. 2 plus a negative 2 is 0. 4 plus 1 is 5. And 7 minus 2 is 5. So now we accomplished our goal. We have a 1, a 0, and now we want to change that into a 1. So think about this a minute. What could you do? Remember, this is just an equation. It's really 5y equals 5. That's all it is. This kind of looks way more complicated than it is. So how can I make that a 1? Well, if I gave you this equation, you would know right away. Oh, I'm going to divide by 5. It's the same thing there. So now our instructions are going to be take row 2 and divide it by 5. So now we're going to get our next one. We divide that by 5. We're going to get a 0, a 1, and a 1. On top, we're just going to recopy it. I don't think you should try too many things in one step. So now we got a 1, a 0, a 1. Now we've got to make that a 0. We're going to use this one to destroy that negative 2. So what could we do? What could we change this into? And add it to this to make it go away? That's right. This was a positive 2. So that's going to be my instructions. I'm going to take row 2, multiply it by 2, and add it to row 1. Now I'm leaving the bottom just like it is. So it's 0. 1, 1. Now let's see, we've got to do that so we can kind of figure out what it is. Row 2, that's this row. Multiply it by a 2 and add it onto this. The safest way is to kind of put your finger here. We're going to multiply this by a 2 and add it to that. So 2 times 0 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. 2 times 1 is 2. So then we just add them up. 1 plus 2 is, oops, I did that wrong. Multiply row 2 by, oops, this one's an error. Got to be real careful with this one. And so it's pretty easy to make it. I multiply this by 2, I should have got a 0 here. And so you got, that's one of the reasons you write these up here so you can go back and check to see because you will make mistakes. If you did this every day for a living, then you wouldn't make mistakes. But you're going to make little mistakes, and you make one in here, and it carries you all through, and it gets terribly frustrating. Now, I've been really lucky because I've caught my mistakes, but it's because I use this method. And so if you just do it all in your head, you can't go back. So 1 plus 0 is 1. Negative 2 plus 2 is 0, and 1 plus 2 is 3. Now we accomplished our goal. It's row reduced. 1, 0, 1, 0. So it's all finished. Now what we need to do is translate it back into regular language. This is our regular language. It's our original equation. So now we're just going to translate this back. And this says 1x equals 3, so x equals 3. And 1y equals 1, so y equals 1. Same answer we had before. And you might think, now, which was the easier way? The way we did this or use an augmented matrix? Well, as a human being, it's probably the first way. But as the machines deal with it, it's this way. 
And the trouble with this row reduced solving simultaneous linear equations in the real world, we could have had 50 variables here, not just x and y, but 50 of them and 50 equations. And then a machine can quickly program in it. You could make an, uh, an augmented matrix like this that's 50 rows, uh, the columns by, well, it'd be 51, and then 50 this way, and then the machine can handle it very easily. It's programming just a little loop. So this method is not, I'm not gonna ask you to do even an X, Y, and Z, even though when I went to school, we had to do them all because we had to do them by hand, but now calculators or computers will do this. So what we have to know is how the input goes and how the output's gonna go. And we have to understand kind of what it's doing. So this is what it's doing. And so we solved simultaneous linear equations using an augmented matrix. And you should be able to do this on your calculator also. Okay, let's go to our calculator and try this. And uh, so take a look at the calculator. Where are we gonna go to do this whole process? We're gonna have to go to matrix. And so we're gonna go second matrix. And now we've gotta uh, do some, the names are the first column. The second one is telling you what I already have in there. And thus we wanna go over and edit one of those. So we'll edit the first one. So now it says I have a two by two matrix. So what kind of a matrix did I want to do this problem? I gotta input this matrix. So I want a two by three matrix. So I can leave the first one as a two, the second one as a three, and then uh, now it popped in another column. So let's see, we've got a two, one, seven, two, one, seven. Next one was one, negative two, one, one, negative two, one. So now we're all set up, we have a row. There's no little dotted line because the calculator doesn't care about that. So now what are we gonna do? Well, we gotta go back to matrix. We gotta remember we were dealing with matrix A. So we wanna go over here to the math and then we gotta figure out what one of these is gonna tell us we can row reduce it. Now this row reduced echelon form is what we want. So we're gonna do that. Now let's clear all this other stuff out first. Sometimes the calculator doesn't like to deal with all that stuff. So let's go back, go over to math, go down, or you can go down, it's easier to go up, but we'll go down, just go down to get row reduced. This EF means echelon form, but row reduced echelon form is fine. So we press that. Now it wants to know which matrix do we want to row reduce. So we'll go back. Now we want matrix A. So it's on A, so if we press where the name is highlighted, it's gonna just pull up an A, and now we wanna row reduce it. And it row reduced it into 103011. And that was 103 and 011. Now in this class, if it's a little small two equation, two variable problem, you should be able to do it by hand. But if I give you a bigger one, you should be able to do it on the calculator. So you have to decide how to solve simultaneous, you have to know how to solve simultaneous linear equations using an augmented matrix. On the final, there will be simultaneous linear equations and you've got to do it four different ways. So think of the ways we already have. Graphing, uh, using elimination or algebraically, and now we have this augmented matrix. And in the next section, we're going to do it with a matrix equation. Uh, thank you and there will be, uh, finish your video homework problem and um, good luck with this section. Thank you.